Richard, thanks again for coming on the program, sir. Great talking to you, and uh, congratulations on uh, getting Lieutenant Kim's guns back to him. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I know that you've uh, talked about this quite a bit, but the uh, the circumstances under which uh, Lieutenant Kim's firearms were seized, I think a lot of people, rightfully so, have a, a problem understanding how it is this decorated veteran uh, who was in Washington, D.C. for a doctor's appointment at Walter Reed, uh, got lost but was on his way out of town, on his way to South Carolina where he could legally possess these firearms, ended up in jail, his, his gun seized, and, you know, months and months uh, having to plead guilty to a misdemeanor. How on earth did this happen, Richard? Well, I mean, he was stopped for a legitimate, turned out to be a legitimate traffic violation. I think he went through a red light because he was lost. And uh, they asked him whether um, he had any firearms in the car. And being an honest guy, he said, yes, he did. They were in the trunk because he believed, and quite correctly, that the guns were being transported lawfully through D.C., uh, in compliance with with federal law and with D.C. law, because all the guns were unloaded. They were all cased, um, and they were inaccessible to him from the passenger compartment of his vehicle. But the police um, arrested him nonetheless. They, they originally also arrested him for having a uh, suspended driver's license. That turned out to be a clerical error in the files, and that was quickly taken care of. But uh, they arrested him also for the, for the firearms, which they alleged were not uh, properly, were not registered, which, of course, they weren't because he didn't live in D.C. The problem was that the D.C. Police Department is, for several years has been giving out incorrect information uh, about how people can transport firearms through the district. And it was only about two weeks ago that the uh, police website was finally corrected to get the law correct. And obviously, uh, the officers simply didn't know what the law was. They didn't know that his transportation was in compliance with the law. And um, so they arrested him and, and charged him with those violations. Wow. Uh and it was only due to the, I don't know if you're, the series of stories by Emily Miller. Oh, yeah. Um, and her constant harping on uh, uh, City Council Judiciary Committee Chairman Mr. Mendelson about the errors that D.C. had on its website uh, about the law. And, and finally, as I said, about two we only two weeks ago, they finally fixed the website and they finally fixed their handout information. So maybe now the D.C. police will know what the law is, but it's a disgrace that, that they didn't know it you know, two years ago. Uh, well, it absolutely is a disgrace. And, and you know, and the fact that, uh, I mean, not only did Lieutenant Cam have to hire uh, a you, but, you know, ultimately, uh, 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 you know, South Carolina senators got involved, Representative Tim Scott got involved. I mean, you know, it, it almost literally took, Richard, uh, if not an act of Congress, an act of uh, several members of Congress to uh, to get this resolved. Unquestionably, I mean, because after the K after the charges were dismissed, uh, the United States Attorney's Office very promptly, I have to give them credit for that, sent a letter to the property clerk, who's the person who holds property that's seized in D.C., and said, "We no longer need the property; you can release it." And I immediately wrote a letter to the property clerk and said, now that it, the United States attorney has said you can release it, we want it back. And that was in June of 2011. Uh, and I got no response. I wrote them a second letter in December of 2011, got no response. It wasn't until the story broke in the Washington Times and, as you said, two senators and a congressman got involved that finally, after 11 months, the D.C. property clerk finally decided to get around uh, to doing what his duty under the law is, which is to hold hearings to determine whether he, property should be returned or not. And he had two letters from me in the course of that 11 months and did absolutely nothing. That is amazing. I mean, that, that's just so astounding. But this is, Rich, I mean, this is par for the course, it sounds like, in D.C. It is. This is... This is the reality of what the D.C. gun laws are all about. I mean, Lieutenant Kim is the face of what gun laws really mean. This is who gets affected by it. Yeah. Not, not the bad guy on the street who's, 
you know, holding people up, or it's the it's the good guy like Lieutenant Kim, who's you know a good citizen, more than a good citizen. My gosh, he's served two tours in in uh, the Middle East, and he's going back to to Kosovo uh, in a month or two to serve yet a third tour. You know, he was injured in the line of duty, albeit fortunately not a combat injury, but but in the line of duty. And spent three months. He had to have half of his face rebuilt because of the, the severe injury that he suffered. And DC makes him go through this on top of everything else. And and he's looking at, he's got over eleven thousand dollars worth of property uh, of guns that they are, were holding on to, which we hope by the end of this week they will be shipped out and he'll have them back. Well, let's hope. Uh, Richard, in the meantime, I appreciate uh, all of the work that you've done. And, uh, again, thanks for coming on the show, sir. We really appreciate it. Glad to do it. Thanks for calling. You bet. Richard Gardner, attorney representing Lieutenant Augustine Kim, joining us here tonight on Cam & Company.